Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the cytoplasm and the cell organelles. The cytoplasm is an essential component of the cell, playing a role in maintaining cellular function and integrity. It is a complex dynamics medium that hosts numerous biochemical processes crucial for cell survival. The cytoplasm is the part of the cell enclosed by the cell membrane, excluding the nucleus. It consists of the cytosol, organelles, and various inclusions. The cytosol is a viscous, aqueous solution that constitutes the bulk of the cytoplasm. It contains water, dissolved ions, small molecules, and large water-soluble molecules such as proteins. It serves as the medium for intracellular processes, providing a platform for metabolic reactions and enabling the diffusion of molecules throughout the cell. Cytoplasm inclusions are non-membranous structures that include lipid droplets, glycogen granules, and pigments. Some of this stuff serve as storage sites for nutrients, such as the glycogen and the lipids, the fat, as well as other substances. Now, what are the functions of the cytoplasm? Well, the cytoplasm is integral to various cellular functions, including metabolic pathways. For example, glycolysis. The cytoplasm is the site for glycolysis, the process of breaking down glucose to pyruvate, generating ATP and NADH in the absence of oxygen. It also hosts portions of other metabolic pathways, including gluconeogenesis, making glucose, particularly in the liver, and the pentose phosphate pathway, which plays an important role in, for structures in the genome. The cytoplasm is also important for signal transduction. It's involved in cellular signaling, where signaling molecules relay messages from the cell membrane to the nucleus or other parts of the cell. Essentially what happens is uh, various signaling proteins and second messengers in the cytoplasm facilitates these processes, ensuring that the cell responds appropriately to external or internal stimuli. The cytoplasm is also an area for intracellular transport, so transportation within the cell. And this is aided by the cytoskeleton, which facilitates the transport of organelles, vesicles, and other molecules within the cell. The cytoskeleton involved in particular are the microtubules and actin filaments. These guys act as tracks for the movement of motor proteins, kinesin and dynein, which carry cargo to their destination and really around the cell. Finally, the cytoplasm is important for cellular growth and division. It provides the necessary environment for biosynthetic processes, as well as preparation for mitosis and cytokinesis. Here, the cytoplasm undergoes reorganization to facilitate the division and distribution of cytoplasmic content to the daughter cells, the, essentially the identical cells that a single cell is divided into. As mentioned, the cytoplasm contains a lot of organelles, a lot of the cell's organelles. Let's look at each of these in a bit more detail, beginning with the nucleus. The nucleus is a large membrane-bound organelle surrounded by a double-layered nuclear envelope that contains nuclear pores. Now, these pores regulate the passage of molecules between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Inside the nucleus contains chromatin, essentially your DNA with protein. And also, it contains what's called the nucleoli, where ribosomal RNA synthesis occurs. The nucleus itself acts as a control center of the cell, storing the cell's genetic material, which is our DNA. It regulates gene expression. It's important in DNA replication and cell division. The nucleolus within the nucleus is responsible for producing and assembling ribosome components, which we'll talk about later. Now, the second most important structure is the mitochondria or maybe even the most. 
The mitochondria have a double membrane. The outer membrane is smooth, while the inner membrane is highly folded into structures known as crista, which increases the surface area for ATP production. The matrix, the innermost component or compartment, contains enzymes, mitochondrial DNA, and ribosomes. The mitochondria are the powerhouses of the cell. They generate ATP through the process of oxidative phosphorylation. They're very important because that's how we get our energy. They also play roles in regulating the cell cycle, cell growth, and apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Now the endoplasmic reticulum, which is somewhat continuous with the nuclear envelope. The endoplasmic reticulum is divided into the rough and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Let's talk about the rough first. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is studded with ribosomes on its cytoplasmic surface, giving it this rough appearance. It is involved in the synthesis of proteins that are either excreted from the cell, incorporated into the cell's plasma membrane, or shipped to an organelle. It also plays a role in the initial stages of protein modification and folding. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, on the other hand, lacks ribosomes, and so that's why they appear smooth. It is involved in lipid synthesis, metabolism of carbohydrates, detoxification of drugs and poisons, and storage of calcium ions. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum also helps in the production of steroid hormones. So let's talk about the ribosomes now. The ribosomes are made up of RNA and proteins, forming two subunits, the large and the small. They can be found floating freely in the cytoplasm, or, as we have learned, they can be found attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, giving it its rough shape. Ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. They essentially translate what's called messenger RNA, or mRNA, into polypeptide chains, proteins. Free ribosomes, which are in the cytoplasm, generally synthesize proteins used within the cell, while those bound in the rough endoplasmic reticulum make proteins for membranes, or they export these proteins outside the cell. Which takes us to the Golgi apparatus, or the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is an organelle that consists of a series of flattened membrane-bound sacs called cystinae. It has a distinct polarity with a cis face, which is the receiving side, and a trans face, the shipping side. The Golgi apparatus modifies, it sorts, and packages proteins and lipids received from the endoplasmic reticulum. Within the Golgi apparatus, it then adds carbohydrates to proteins, glycosylation, as well as carbohydrates to lipids, glycolipids, and then sorts them for transport to their final destination. And this can be the lysosome, the plasma membrane, or transportation to be secreted outside the cell. And this would be the case if a cell was to release hormones or some sort of molecule or cytokine. And so, talking about lysosomes, lysosomes are spherical vesicles containing hydrolytic enzymes, capable of breaking down all types of biomolecules. They are bounded by a single membrane. In this diagram, you can see that the Golgi apparatus is giving this sort of endosome some hydrolytic enzymes to form the lysosome. The lysosome functions as the cell's waste disposal system, digesting unwanted materials, damaged organelles, and pathogens. Lysosomes are also involved in various cellular processes, including apoptosis, plasma membrane repair, and cell signaling. Then you have these things called peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are small, membrane-bound organelles containing oxidative enzymes. They're very similar to lysosomes. These guys are found in eukaryotic organisms. Peroxisomes, unlike lysosomes, they carry out oxidative reactions, leading to the production and breakdown of hydrogen peroxide, 
They are involved in lipid metabolism, including the breakdown of very long chain fatty acids and the detoxification of harmful substances. Now, another very important organelle or structure within the cell is a cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton, as the name suggests, is the skeleton of the cell. The cytoskeleton is composed of three main types of protein filaments, the microfilament, intermediate filament, and microtubule. The microfilaments are thin filaments made up of actin, involved in cell movement and shape maintenance. The intermediate filaments provide mechanical support and maintain cell integrity. The microtubules are hollow tubes made up of tubulin, involved in maintaining cell shape, intracellular transport, very important, and in cell division. So the cytoskeleton in general provides the structural support. It enables cells motility, facilitates intracellular transport, all transportation within the cell, and it organizes the cell's interior. It is also crucial in cell division by forming mitotic spindles. Now, talking about microtubules, which again are important in transportation of things as well as in cell division, I want to introduce you to centrosomes or the centrioles. The centrosomes are composed of two centrioles and each made up of a ring of nine microtubule triplets. It is located near the nucleus. Centrosomes organize the microtubules, the cytoskeleton, and play a pivotal role in cell division by forming the mitotic spindle, which separates chromosomes during mitosis, during cell division. The final organelle, mostly important plants, I guess, are the vacuoles. Vacuoles are membrane-bound sacs within the cytoplasm. In animal cells, vacuoles are generally small and more numerous, whereas plant cells typically have a large central vacuole. Vacuoles are involved in storage of nutrients and waste products, maintenance of turgor pressure in plant cells, and intracellular digestion. They also play a role in isolating harmful material. So in summary, we talked about the cytoplasm and different cell organelles. The nucleus houses the DNA, the mitochondria is the powerhouse, the ribosomes make proteins, and the Golgi apparatus packages everything to be transported around the cell or even outside. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.